I don't care how ridiculous I look in the sky. I just have to let them know. 2006 called. They said, where were y'all at? July 8th called. They said, Raw's in there taking jerbs. They said, we're going to take your jerb. Take your jerb. Take your let's, let's, let's jump right into this. show starts off just the way it should. A, a Wyatt family, big net. It's just, you know, it's just... Dum, 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 dum. They're coming. And it was just, you know, it was, it was basic, but at the same time, it was not basic at all because it got you so super pumped. Um, but the show actually starts off with Bradley Maddox and Vicky Guerrero out in the ring. There's a ladder there. Everyone's confused. She's just like, ladders are big deals. We're like, it's true. Vicky could call, and Bradley Maddox just goes, <laughs> big deal. <laughs> so Vicky ends up climbing the ladder and sits on top of the ladder for the reason that is still unknown. She wanted to appear tall to the world. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, she's tiny. And then as she's talking, all of a sudden, Jerry Lawler chimes in. He's like, hey, just Excuse so you know, me. Yeah, I just found out that the anonymous Rod gentleman, and I wish that was it, but we've just got a word that the fans' opinion will factor into the decision of your job valuation later on tonight. Yeah. We said, hey, no yeah. wrong with that. Here we are. Um, that was pretty much that segment. It was just setting the tone, letting, reminding us later that her job – it was basically the opening segment was to get us to vote, which we didn't. Nope. Um, but the good thing about this, the best part of the segment is, you know, the whole Vicky trying to suck up. She announces three matches for tonight. Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus, uh, Christian versus Kane, CM Punk versus Randy Orton, my babies. And so that was good news. And then they, boom, kicked it off right from the start. Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus. The first thing I said about this match was, I mean – even ba- you think even back when you mentioned the Extreme Rules match, even though it was a good match, you knew Sheamus was going to win, and you knew that in the eye of WWE, Sheamus was here and Daniel Bryan was floating yeah. around here. This was the first time I can recall that it was here, if not Daniel Bryan higher, which I think he was he's definitely higher right now. I don't yeah, know how much? Definitely. So it had a, such a different feel to it because it's like we've seen this before, but not like this. Yeah. No, you're just used to, oh, Sheamus is going to win. Daniel Bryan's a good wrestler. They're going to do this, but Sheamus is going to win. So I like this match because it was just, it was, we've seen it before, but it was a totally different perspective. I like it because people are more invested in Daniel Bryan, so when Sheamus hits him, it's more of a, yeah. hey, hey, it's our guy. And when he hits Sheamus, you see the red mark, you're like, oh, he's beating his head. Yeah. So thumbs up for me on this match. Definitely. Mr. Small Package hit that small package. Mr. Small Package. Yeah. Great way to get a victory. Doesn't make you know it's it's, it's Dan Bryan. Yeah. Dan Bryan's a bigger deal right now. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and have to explain why Dan Bryan won this match. He's a bigger deal. People care about him more. They like him more. Yeah. Um. You ride out with you ride or die. Tell this guy ride the hot hand. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> never never leave the girl that's getting you to the dance. You never leave. When never, you want a heater. Never leave the table when you want a heater. Words from the Hangover One. Um. Then we got backstage, we got AJ and Big E talking, and Big E just said, AJ, why are you chilling? You gotta be chilling. You gotta be chilling, man. Yeah. <laughs> what? And then Dolph comes in, which is, it's, it didn't even like occur to me until tonight. AJ and Dolph have not been together for a very long time. I think this is still their, let's turn Dolph face, and then they didn't really think, oh, what are we doing with AJ? So they're, they're still trying to figure that out, which there's, is, which is fine. There's it's some not, tension there. Yeah, it's not a big enough deal to where it's like a big deal. Like, it doesn't bother me that we haven't seen them together every single week, but it just dawned on me, like, oh, yeah, that makes sense now. So, yeah, you could you could feel the tension, and they were just talking about, you know, oh, we got to leave uh, Money in the Bank with both titles and all this and that. So, I, I've, I'm already throwing it out there now. Uh, AJ's going to turn on Dolph and join Del Rio, because that's just what she do. And that's just what WWE wants us to do with Del Rio. Yeah, exactly. Just... Just keep doing that. Um, but then we got tag team action. We got two thirds of the shield, obviously, because they're the champs, versus tons of funk. Um, you know, I, I I found the problem with this. Who? What is the target audience of tons of funk? Little kids. Little kids. Who did we watch Raw with today? Little kids. Two little kids. What did the What did the older version of the little kids say when he saw tons of funk? Ah, oh, not again. Exactly. The problem is if you're not even like not and if you can't uh, hit if your you target can't hit your target audience, what do you think we're thinking when we say this? It's like Del Rio's not even over with Mexicans. No, 
They don't like him. They're like, you are a disgrace to my country. You're a disgrace to the art of wrestling. Put the mask back on. Exactly. They love Sin Cara. Yeah, they love Sin Cara. Let's ride or die with Sin Cara. Hey, call it now. WrestleMania 30, Sin Cara is winning the World Heavyweight Championship. Mm. Calling it, dude. He's going to catch that heater. Hey, he's going with it. He's going to go with it. I'll change my mind later, guaranteed. But hey, he's with it right now. Just remember that. As of now, you know, he hasn't got to run with the IC title. He hasn't got to run with anything. He hasn't got to run with running. (laughs) Yeah. They didn't even let him run the track once yet. Every time he gets they, halfway through, he twists his ankle. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. If he can get the opportunity to get loose, though. Oh, yeah. Sakar, we'll talk about him later. Yeah. We, he has his own set. We'll get back into that. But oh. uh, this match was what it sounds like. It was the Shield versus Tons of Funk. Uh, the Shield wins out for a mean spear by Roman Reigns. So that was sick. Uh, then we got the one-hour main event because little baby has got to go to bed, so they got to roll out John Cena. <laughs> Uh, so Cena comes out, he starts talking, cliche Cena stuff. You called me out. I'm here. Where are you? And Mark Henry comes out, and they go back and forth for a while. It was, it was, it was pretty good. It was, you felt it. Yeah, you felt Cena, it. Cena did much better this week than he did the previous weeks, and Mark Henry continues to kill it. So that was good because when you have a guy killing it and a guy lagging behind, we'll build up to WrestleMania 28. Um, you, <laughs> sorry, John, but like, no, you, you know what I'm saying? Mark Henry's just going hard, and you're like, oh, it sucks. He's doing so well, but I still think Cena's going to win, even though he's doing nothing to further this. Um, but today was much better. Mark Henry still laid the hammer, and it's like it was like it's like watching how, how I Met Your Mother, and then seeing Ted stuff. You're like. I understand people like Ted. He's a focal point of the show and all that stuff. But at this point, who's watching for Ted? Ain't nobody. Ain't nobody watching for Ted. Who's watching for Cena? Ain't nobody. Let's check the ratings. Little babies. Let's check the ratings. Yeah, we'll check the ratings. But, um, so yeah, you got them going at it. And then finally Cena freaks out. And he takes his shirt off. And he says, cross this line. Margaret says, I ain't fighting for free. I took a pay cut back in the day. <laughs> That's uh, not a sale. I'm getting paid today. Yeah. And I loved how... Mark Henry kind of says, like, okay, let's go. And he takes a step forward and Cena backs up. And I said, gotcha. Um, and then Mark Henry ends up attacking him, laying him out, which was so fun and so sad because I don't have faith anymore. I had so much faith in Mark Henry until they let him lay out John Cena. John Cena does not end two shows on his back, which mm. made me so worried. So I lost a lot of hope in Sunday. But it was fun today. So I'll still hope on Sunday, but I've lost a lot of Wishful thinking. That that right there, that's the gravy match at Money in the Bank. If oh, yeah. Mark Henry pulls it off, oh, that's man. the gravy of the show. It's gonna be so much fun. Because chances are one of our dudes is gonna win one of the two ma- Money in the Bank matches. We got a lot of odds. We got a lot of odds. Solid odds. We got a lot of people we like in these matches. We got a lot of people we like. They can't screw us over that bad. Seriously, I don't want to jinx it, but if you legitimately named the guys that we would be mad about, it is much less than the guys would be. I'd be yeah, able. exactly. And the so, odds decrease on each two. Yeah, exactly. And we still got a Dolph opportunity as well. A Dolph opportunity, you know. Yeah. I. They have an opportunity to make me like Ryback again. <laughs> <laughs> I know later, it. Later, later, <laughs> later, yeah, later, later. Um. So yeah. So this was you know it's I was cool with this segment. Um. So it's cool with that. And then we go backstage with Randall Keith Thornton. And I loved it because he had jealous eyes, brother. And he was looking at John Cena, brother. And he said, hey, John, I want the belt back. Cause this I, one's cause for I, the belt. Man, you only had the belt for a while. You guys got to share. Randy hasn't had the belt in a minute. Seriously, it's been two years. Um, oh but he's gosh, talking. We're really close to that two-year mark. When did, he, when did he drop it after that Christian feud? Bay Scott or uh, Henry. Bay Scott. He dropped it to Henry. So we're right. about Henry we're carried about, it like a man. We're about, we're about a month, two months away from literally the two month point because he lost it after SummerSlam. Remember? Yeah. Henry beat him twice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Orton's basically talking and he just says, hey, if John Cena retains, I will show no hesitation to cash it in. I said, oh, baby. That's all I want to see is Randy Orton pin John Cena. Didn't get to see that very much. Um, next match, you have Miz on commentary. This, this is one of those things where they finally did what I wanted to, but not with the people I wanted them to. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was Miz on commentary, Jericho versus Curtis Axel. Um, it's, you know, it's basically because Ryback's selling his injury, so he can't do much, and Curtis Axel and the Miz are in a feud at Money in the Bank. So this match actually went how things like this in my mind should go. Miz causes a distraction. Jericho takes advantage, beats Curtis Axel. Curtis Axel's pissed. Not 
I'm over here. Wah, spin move. Perfect yeah. flex win. So that was, was good. Going, it, was just, it was just, it was just that it was not the guys, but that's fine. I, hey, it had the right basis, so I can't be mad at that. Um, I'm almost to the point of, I mean, you don't, I mean, Curtis Axel's new enough to where you kind of want to s- still make him seem like a big deal, but I'm almost to the point. Actually, I'm. It's it's nothing. It's not Curtis Axel's fault. It's 100 percent the Miz, and I'm just sick of seeing the Miz. I would much rather. This is just me talking. Have this be the pre-show and let the Shield and Usos do their thing on the actual show. Amen. That's just me. Um. So yeah. Then oh, this is this is one of my underrated low-key segments of the night with all the SmackDown Money in the Bank contestants backstage, <laughs> except for Ambrose. They come and it's, it's Rhodes Scholars talking. And they're, you know, talking about how they're buddies. And then you got Zeb Coulter's two dudes come in, and they're talking. And then Wade comes in, and then all of a sudden, Fat Dogma jumps in. Fuck. No, no. Fuck. Don't you dare. Fuck. No. 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 Go. Fuck. It was one of the best segments of the night, low-key. Wade Barrett cracks him in the face. In oh. the face. I loved it. People are talking crap on this money. But it's none of the big stars are the same people that bitch. Why I haven't seen a win last year. It's not building a star. Hey, guess what? There's seven dudes. No matter what, unless it's like Swagger, it's going to be a new star. It's going to be a new person to the main event scene. Okay. Well, okay. Time out. You're calling Swagger a star? No, I'm saying it'd be no. I'm saying a new he's, champion. He's been to the yeah. He's had it. Before. He's been to the promised land. He's been to the top. He's the only guy. He ate the apple in the What's garden it? way yeah. too soon. Oh, yeah, he did. The apple was filled with pot. It didn't help it. that, and again, unless you've seen, I had to look it up on YouTube because I just have the DVD, but I heard people talk about it. Apparently, it took him like legitimately 55 seconds to figure out how the hell to get the briefcase off the thing. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've ever heard. Um, so, yeah, he... he didn't they, he, didn't, he they recut, didn't they recut that? Oh, yeah, on the DVD, he gets it immediately. Yeah, they recut it on a ladder, on ladder match, yeah, too. It's, yeah, it's hilarious. Look on YouTube. You can find the real version. He's just an idiot. Oh, he's just up there. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. The crowd's like, uh, waiting for someone to come in. It just it hurt the moment because you're like, okay, everyone's this hurt, really? It was at a Mania, too, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, That's your WrestleMania moment. That's Mania 26. <laughs> oh, gosh. But yeah, so that's what I'm oh, saying. Man. It's like yeah. don't don't complain that there's not enough star power when you complain. And you're the same people that want who, new stars to get. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. it's counterproductive. You guys were you the, just look yourself. You just make yourself look dumb. You guys were the same people who bitched when uh, Wade Barrett got uh, taken out of the main event. Oh, he should have won the belt from Cena. He should have won. And now yeah. when he's getting back up there, oh, he's not ready. Really? But he was ready. What? I don't, I don't get it. I, I I don't think he's ready right now. No, he wasn't ready back then. Liked him a lot better back then, but he wasn't ready back then. Do so. I think he could do more? I do, I do think if they gave it to him, oh, he okay. would somehow roll with it. And I think that he's definitely going to get there. Yeah. Not with this game. You know what? I don't think he's ever going to be there to where we can definitively say he gets it and he's going to run with it. But he's he's not the kind of guy who drops the ball with really anything. No. They give him some crap gimmicks, and he somehow saves them a little bit. Mm-hmm. Bare knuckle fighter who tapes his hands. That makes sense to me. Somehow, uh, we call him out. It doesn't matter. No, I'm telling you. Yeah, so I'm excited for this one. I'm excited for both Money in the Bank matches, but we got seven heels and seven faces. Let's just do this thing. Let's do that thing. I hope they add one more each. That'd be cool. Speaking of the person they should add, mm. I'm just going to just... So, you just got to ride this train from now until Mania, unless they take him off TV. Ladies and gentlemen. I'll also give you your time. La- All right. Ladies and gentlemen. This is your moment. WWE is sitting on one of the biggest international superstars. I met him. Met, he met him. One of the biggest international superstars they could possibly roll out there. And a man who at one point could be bigger than the belt, which you can name maybe a handful of guys who at one point in a could main event could be a, a major a main event of top four show and not have have you for the title. And that man is Sinkara, not Del Rio, who's the other person in this match. They have the wrong guy rolling with stuff. They have the wrong guy with the mouthpiece and they have the wrong guy getting the love. Ladies and gentlemen, Sinkara is what a WWE wrestler in 2013 should be if they can't talk. 
You want the guys who can talk. If they can't, they better be a YouTube, a watch on YouTube and fully bask in their glory thing. And that's what he can do. He's the kind of guy who would get people to tune into the show because you know you're going to have a good time watching his match. Okay, you leave this later. Ladies and gentlemen, Sin Cara by WrestleMania 30 is either going to be a the World Heavyweight Champion or in a match with Rey Mysterio that's going to blow the house down because Rey's got one more left in it. And that right there is more of a stretch than saying Sin Cara's future world champion. Because the dude, for how small he is, has the type of ability that people would tune in to see. I would, when SmackDown was at its best, was Sin Cara wrestling almost every week. Mm -hmm. He was wrestling black Sin Cara. Yeah. <laughs> and as ludicrous as that was... It was and so much fun. <laughs> we enjoyed it. Yep. They went to Mexico. We tuned in, pumped to watch the reaction to Mexico for that mess versus yep. mass match, knowing that Hunico was going to lose Black and Cara. Missing. Yeah. Do I think the lights are gimmicky? Yes, I do. <laughs> Everyone thinks the lights are gimmicky. When it doesn't match his, when it doesn't match his uh, outfit anymore. Poor guy. Do I think you roll him out there with the right, the right types of guys? are finally moving up there. I smell a 20 minute video by you yeah. coming on solo video oh. about why Sin Cara should be the future face of the WWE. We that. have time tonight. Let's record tonight. Hey, ladies yeah, and gentlemen, wait. expect wait. the video. Expect yeah. that video. Let me put it, let me say one more thing though. CM Punk against Sin Cara. Think about it for five seconds. Hmm. You want to put those together? You know what I hear? Money sign. Chikara. <laughs> I don't think CM Punk likes Chikara. No, CM Punk and Chikara. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. Good tip. All right. I don't know what Chikara oh, is. Gosh. The first four. Chikara. Oh, this next segment, man. Oh, but by the way, Dolph interrupts in this match, and Del Rio just leaves. So, technically, Chikara won. Hey, you're on the roll. <laughs> you know what? It starts now. Yep. It all begins again. Let's add him let's add to, the, let's add to the Rising Stars match. Okay. Deal. Okay, because I know who I want to add to the other match later. Um, then we got the Vicky Job evaluation. You got Triple H, Vince, and Steph coming out. Uh, Vince and Triple H getting into a heated argument. Vince is talking about how it's better for business. I just did the Triple H voice for Vince. <laughs> Triple H deserves all the voices. <sighs> Argue with myself. That's all Triple H hears. It's his part, so whatever. So, yeah, Vince is basically like sticking up for Vicky. I think she's doing a good job. She did a lot of good things. Triple H said, no, uh, she sucks at her job. Uh, she actually, he actually said that. Um, he single-handedly buried the Vicky Guerrero character and at the same time made me like him so much more after uh, the fans decided that she should get fired. And Triple H just starts hysterically laughing. And the, his, the look on his face made me like Triple H in that moment. It was just funny. Um, that magic moment. It was so funny. So basically, like I said, they get in the argument. They end up, oh, Stephanie, you decide. And Stephanie's like, let's let the fans decide. And they got destruction. So Vicky gets fired, and Vincent Man's like, I'm going to make this better. You fans don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to give you what you deserve. Brad Maddox. And we said, yeah. We stood up and our fingers crossed for this moment. Bradley, Bradley. That magic moment. It was so much fun. He's just... He has the top five facial expressions in wrestling right now. I don't care if you... I'll, I'll go top two. I can't think of anybody else. He wins. His, he just he doesn't say a word on most Raws, but you feel like he's an intricate part. He's, oh, hear me out here. His new pet project... Sin Cara. There you go. Yeah. You got to hope for that. That's what you need. Because yeah, he can mouthpiece that dude all the way to the top. Yeah. There you go. Um, oh, man. The second of our three Money in the Bank matches tonight, well, Money in the Bank participant matches, Kane versus Christian. And this match is going along. I'm like, eh, I mean, I like these dudes, but compared to the other two matches, I was like, eh, these are kind of like the afterthoughts. Kane ends up getting away with a choke slam. Sorry, peeps. Oh, and then just the screen, just them chilling, just like he's on a rocket, just chilling, and he's talking, and he goes through all the thing, and he shows, we're here, blows it out, music hits, he comes out, pitch black, just carrying a lantern, just no lighting at all, just carrying a lantern, just walks down, sits, 
you can you can tell there's a rocking chair there at the time, but he sits in a rocking chair, blows out the lantern, lights come on, the other two dudes, Luke Harper and is that wait, is it Luke Harper? Yeah. I can't remember the other guy's name, it's like Eric something, I think. Eric Rowan. Yeah. Um, they start just wailing on Kane, just going crazy. Um, they end up beating him down to the outside. They oh, they put his head on the steel steps, and they ram it with the other steel steps. And then Bray Wyatt just walks over. And he just kind of gets down on his knees and just does the, oh. And I'm like, this dude is so creepy. It was so raw. And then, of course, fucking Baltimore has to, luckily WWE was able to cut away, but they have to prove why we complain that we can never have good things, and then when we get good things, Husky Harris. I was like, oh, of course. Wow, you're you're so smart, Baltimore. Like you got us. We didn't know already. Like, oh Wait, he was Husky Harris. What? Seriously, I hate crowds like this. Are the reason we can't get good things anymore. Yeah. They just like are. Oh, it just drives me crazy. It's like, why? The, the, what are you gaining? A, do, you, do you think there's crowds at home going, holy shit? That is Husky Harris. I hate, I hate this guy now. This guy sucks. No, you guys popped like crazy when he came out, and then he does something, and you're all, oh, we don't like him now nah, after 20 seconds. Husky Harris. Yeah. Oh, you guys are so smart. You're, you're just it's so smart. It's different when they chant Olay in NXT. That is like... That's like an homage to him. They're yeah. not trying to call him out like, oh, you used to be El yeah. Generico. You suck now. Yeah, they don't chant Hero at Chris Hero. No. Or they should, Chris is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you never got. And I'll I'll wager to say that in terms of actual stardom, El Generico and Chris Hero are just as well known as Husky Harris was. Yeah, because he didn't really get a run at that. No, and then he got hurt. He got punted out of his career by Randall Keith Orton. So hello. He got he got punted into this. Yeah, which is awesome. So thanks, Randy. Thanks, but Randy. yeah, that just oh, that pissed me off. I'm glad they were able to cut it out. Like, because yeah. they were going to commercial anyways. But that and what chance he would go burn? Seriously, especially I mean, what chance have their place? But not when Mark Henry's talking. No. Not when the Undertaker's talking. Oh my God, I wanted to kill everyone yeah. back when that happened. Um, but yeah, so they debuted. I thought it was awesome. It was creepy as hell, as it should be. Um, next segment, Colby. Oh wait, no, next segment. Oh, almost, God. yeah. Right back. Oh, yes. Emotional. Right back. Um, so Vicky's leaving, she's crying, she has her box, and Ryback comes up, helps her, grabs the box, sets it down, says, you deserve better, Vicky, and hugs her, walks off. <laughs> Emotional, Emotional, Ryback. That's all I'm going to say, that's all that needs to be said. Next, you're right, next segment is a Colby special. AJ and Alicia versus Caitlin and Leo, the bell is on commentary, no twin magic happened, I don't know what happened. Ladies and gentlemen, tune in to, tune in to Colby's Total Divas review. Soon. Soon. It's coming. Um, then we got, they're here. Davis? Hey, the <laughs> Bellas. Get over here, the Bellas. Twin um, magic on this. <laughs> seriously, get over And the words, oh, man. You know what I'm going to miss most about Off the Rope Show kind of sort of disbanding? Huh. b rad b rad b rad I've been able to cope. Taste of Tony T. No. Metal D. No. The Schlegel interacting with everyone. No. Mike Rowe. No. Smokey the Cat. No. I don't know. The Pencil in the Air. Marvelous Mark. Marvelous Mark where they just let him talk with no one else around him to where he somehow finds a way to say how much he appreciates the Bella Sluts. Bella Sluts. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite moment of my favorite moment of Off the Rope show was the night after I got on or the, the night I got on Tout the like third time just by myself. Uh, one the segment on author from Marvelous Mark goes, "Who really chops my ass? Just a true worship got raw again. Whose dick is he sucking?" And I said, <laughs> "If you only knew." Um, but, but yeah, so I, that makes sense. We will miss Marvelous Mark. You, I'm just gonna need you to talk about this next match while I wall over my babies. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the final match of the night is building up with why Vic Guerrero was the best GM, and I don't know how long. She just gives us the banger matches of her lifetime. CM Punk versus Randall Keithord. This match had everything you want. Suspense. Action. Thrilling moves. Great psychology. A crash up to the outside. A commercial break. An unpredictable winner. CM Punk pulling it off via GTS, but having it be so far 
And having there be no almost RKOs almost sells it even better to where it's not like... Because after you do the false GTS, when you do the false RKO, you don't get as big of a reaction. Yeah. And you don't get a big, re a big reaction for the real RKO. Hmm. Because that's like, well, you already made Yeah, yeah. Well, Randy Orton's going to get the next thing. Mm -hmm. So when they just have Punk hit that GTS, you're like, oh! You're like, oh, we never got to that point. Yeah. And Punk hits it. This was... For free, this match is everything you want from a free match. And they're proving that they have enough guys to where they can roll out free matches and then people will be fine with it and tune into it. And not have it be like an issue, yeah. Yeah, where it's not like, oh, give and win, money, man. Yeah, we had some bangers tonight. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. We had some bangers. Afterwards, I'll just do this while you talk about it. Oh, so afterwards, all of a sudden, Daniel Bryan just comes running out going, Buck ass wild. I don't care about the stats. I'm the guy going over on the last show. Pay per view. I don't care. Keep talking about it. Yeah, he comes out and he attacks CM Punk. He just wails on him. He goes nuts. Gets him outside of the ring. Beats the crap out of him. Gets him. I don't know if he hit him with the. I think he hit him with the ladder too. Because then he takes the ladder in the ring. Hits Orton with the ladder. Lays them both out. And I thought it was just going to be like the whole crash. Everyone runs out. Thankfully it wasn't. Because that bugs me sometimes. Damn right. Just sets the ladder up. Climbs up. Doesn't jack swagger it. Grabs the briefcase. Holds it up as the crowd goes. Yes. And that's the end. That's the last thing we see. So, Ladies and gentlemen, that's how you position. They aren't. They have not dropped the ball yet with Daniel Bryan. And they've rolled out everything. And he's hit a home run with everything. Mm -hmm. He hit a home run when he beat, took down the shield. Yep. He hit a home run the first time he took him down after the match. Nothing to beat him at the time that he took out all three of them. Yeah. Oh, that was incredible. He had a home run tonight. Mm -hmm. He had a home run in that match with Orton. The Orton thing, yeah. Yeah. He's hitting the home runs every time he comes out for anything. Uh huh. So anything. Mm -hmm. So. But it's almost to the is, point where do you want him to win the briefcase? Because or I here's here's my problem. Yeah. I don't want Daniel Bryan to win because I I look back two years ago of how shocked we were when he won it. Yeah. And I never thought I'd say this. I think he's almost too big for it now. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's almost too big for it. He's at the point where he could main event SummerSlam with Cena and just because yeah, and without it, and it wouldn't you wouldn't think twice about it. It doesn't to help. To where I feel like the briefcase brings him back down to where like, oh, yeah, he needs to cash in that yeah. to get a shot. That's why I don't want him to win. Correct. Just because I think at this point he's big enough for it. That's why I don't want Punk to win. That's why I'm cheering for Randy Orton hardcore. While he's big in, his name is big enough for it, if you look at what he's been doing, he's not at all. He's, like, perfect for it. Yeah. It's the build back up, and that's the way to get into it. Without having him have to go on the fucking reign of terror, winning 40 matches, and then be like, he's back. It's just more like, okay, Randy Orton comes back, strikes, wins it, and then it's just back. And especially with the fact that he's been involved with the two, two of the three most over guys. Yeah, exactly. Or two of the four. I'm going to put, yeah. I'm going to put, I'm not going to rank the four, but those, those two, Cena and Henry, are the four most over guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And those two are in a match already. So you put these two guys on top of the ladder, going back and forth. And then Randy comes through, knocks over that, and knocks them both off, and then climbs it up himself and takes that win. So I'm cheering for Randy Orton, folks. You just got it in a nutshell. Yep. Um. So yeah, it's not like I don't want Daniel Bryan to win. Yep. I don't want him to win because he's. I don't like him. It's because I literally think he can do it without it. Yeah, oh yeah, and they they're pushing, same with Punk. They're pushing him to be able to do it without it too by him going and showing that he's above. Yeah, him he be able to beat up Punk and Orton. Yeah. I believe, ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen. So yeah, that's my feelings on that. Um, so yeah, that was raw. Let us I'm, know. I'm excited for your Sin Cara video. I am. I also have hashtag Ask Jake this Wednesday. Yeah, you do. Start uh, questions. sending questions, you but not Sin Cara related because that video's coming out tomorrow. Yeah, that video's coming. So don't worry about the Sin Cara questions. We okay. know you're you're fiending for it. So the streets need it. Wait till wait till Tuesday night to ask those questions because they may be addressed in the video tomorrow. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's raw. I was thoroughly fine with raw, and I was very happy with it. Yeah, we're going to be NCAA football in a couple hours. Oh, yeah, we are. It's going to be the best of times. Yeah. Screw work. Yeah, screw work. Screw rap. You'll you're be sick. It's bigger than rap. Take us off. You're sick tomorrow. No. Oh, I can't go in. Oh, my stomach. I had, I had bad betas yesterday. I had yeah. seven betas. Um, I actually had betas today. My boss shows up. So my dad and I drive to there, and, and then betas. my boss pulls in at the same freaking time. He says, oh, hello, here's some betas. He said, you won lunch jackpot. He was paying for it. Boom, there you go. I'm going to do that myself. Take some. Obviously. 
So yeah, let us know your thoughts. Money in the Bank's coming up. Obviously, let us know what you thought about this show. Subscribe above. Like this video, and we will see you. He will see you tomorrow, even though it's going to be filmed right now, pretty much. And Wednesday. And we'll see you Wednesday and other days. So, yeah. Smack hey, hey uh, preview show coming? Smackdown. Again, yeah, maybe? preview. We might, we might just go seven weeks. the seven-day-a-week schedule this week just to see what happens. But, hey, we'll see you guys when we see you.